speaking world brought to you by Network of French Alliance in Southeast Asia. Today's event is the first virtual gathering among Southeast Asian partners, a great collaboration between the alliances in Bali, Bangkok, Brunei, Manila, Medan, Penang, and Singapore. Hi everyone, my name is Zara Carbonell and I am thrilled to be your host this afternoon. All right, so today is extra special because it is the first time that we are gathering almost every Alliance Française in Southeast Asia, together with the French Chamber of Commerce of Thailand, Malaysia, and Philippines. So to put the spotlight on opportunities offered by the French speaking world, we've got French companies, French speakers living in ASEAN countries and companies who are looking to expand through the French speaking world market. And as you know, the flag bearer of of our beloved language around the world, we are more than happy to connect you with each other. Okay, so today will be all sorts of exciting as we will be introducing to you experts from across the industries. So we will be discussing how relevant the French speaking world is between ASEAN countries for starters. Second, we will also be talking about the challenges of a post COVID world and what we can do to start addressing these. We will also be opening the floor to job markets in Canada and French institutions based in Southeast Asia. And of course, we will be getting to hear firsthand testimonials from people whose lives and careers have changed drastically for the better with the acquisition of French proficiency. I know that everyone's excited and we are too, so let's jump to it. As I've mentioned, there are a lot of things to learn and absorb today, but before we get on it, I want to first say thank you to everyone who made this possible. First up, everyone in attendance, give yourselves a big round of applause. We would also like to say thank you to our sponsors, Desjardins, Castelli, and our media partner, Manila Times. Thank you so much to the Filipino DFA, the French Embassy in Manila, the French Institute in Paris, the French Chamber of Commerce in Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines, and of course, the ICRC, the Red Cross, for their unending support. And again, a big congratulations to the, the whole network of Alliance Frances in Southeast Asia for being here in this very momentous occasion. All right, we already know how important today is, but to add that cherry on top, did you know that this year we're actually celebrating the 75th anniversary of French-Filipino diplomatic relations? That means 75 years of working, growing, and succeeding together. And what better way to celebrate and know more about the French-Filipino relationship than hearing from the French ambassador to the Philippines herself? So ladies and gents, let us kickstart today with a special message from our French ambassador to the Philippines, let us all welcome Her Excellency Ambassador Michelle Bocuse. Good afternoon, Ambassador. Good afternoon and good afternoon to you all. Dear Directors of Chamber of Commerce and Industry, dear CEO, dear Alliance, of course, dear public, welcome to this forum organized by the network of alliance française in southeast asia and coordinated by alliance française de Manille with the support of institut francais de paris and i thank you all it's a pleasure to see how dynamic the french cultural network in southeast asia is with both alliance française and institut francais gathered to promote professional careers offered by the mastery of french language i would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the French Chambers of Commerce for the first rate work they are doing in their respective countries. They organize, coordinate, and offer visibility to a vibrant network of industries and service providers. In the Philippines, the partnership between the Chamber of Commerce and Alliance Francaise has been a strong and fruitful one. And I hope this forum will bring broader cooperation on a regional scale. It is fantastic to know there is such a large audience of young professionals eager to work in French and within the French speaking world. The bilateral trade between France and the ASEAN countries is continuously increasing. Canada is about to sign a free trade agreement and Africa with 212 million French speakers is now the fastest growing continent for ASEAN commercial exchanges. Opportunities to develop partnerships in the French speaking world are tremendous. And the French language remains a determinant in many fields, trade, international institutions, humanitarian projects, diplomacy, and even sports. And as you know, France will be hosting the next Olympic games in 2024. 
Clearly, having French in the CV opens many doors, as you will see during this forum. You will meet with inspiring French speakers, entrepreneurs, managers, peacekeepers, diplomats, volunteers, and many others. It is also a very special moment for us in the Philippines to open the forum as we celebrate this year, the 75th anniversary of French Filipino diplomatic relations. I'm delighted to know that our Filipino friends came in significant numbers, expressing once again their interest in France and the French language. So thank you all. I hope that this event will connect companies with the right talents as well as allow talents to find opportunities for career development. I wish you a very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup, Ambassador Michelle Bocuse. Thank you so much for gracing us with that very special message. 75 years of progress for the French and Filipinos indeed. You know, it has been such a wonderful feat and there is so much more to look forward to. And I'm sure that again, everyone here just wants to get to the panel already. But before we send you off, we have two more people who would like to give everyone a warm welcome. And of course, at this point, we will be calling on the director and the deputy director of Alliance Française Manila, Mr. Xavier Leroux and Mr. Vincent Robin. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Zara. Thank you so much, Madam Ambassador, Your Excellency, for these very encouraging, uh, welcoming uh, remarks that we really appreciate. Uh, I would like, of course, to congratulate, congratulate and to thank uh, our Deputy Director, Vincent Robin, who's been very, very active uh, for the last, uh, let's say, six months uh, in order to organize this uh, fantastic uh, regional forum with uh, a lot of Alliance Francaise, the Institut Francais in Cambodia, Madame Ambassador mentioned the Institut Francais in Paris as well, uh, which has been supporting this uh, event. And uh, of course, it totally makes sense to organize such regional projects. And I'm, I'm really hoping that this regional project is only the start for further uh, projects in that direction, uh, because the ASEAN is, is becoming more and more uh, important in the region. And, um, and of course, uh, working together as a network is extremely uh, interesting and and allows us to enhance our projects. Now I'd like to give the floor to Vincent uh, and again, congratulate him for this fantastic job. Merci, Madame Ambassador. Merci, Xavier. Hello, everyone, and thanks for your participation. I'm delighted uh, to see such a large number of CEO HR students coming from many countries of ASEAN, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. I'm, I think I even noticed some Indian students coming with us. So uh, I would like to have a special word for the CCI, the French Chamber of Commerce and Industry, their director and their team who have been enthusiastic and responsive since the beginning of the project. I would like to thank our partners, Desjardins, Castellicesia, Manila Times, and also the International Committee of the Red Cross. When we started working on this forum, we did not imagine that it was possible to gather such a, so many amazing speakers and such a large audience. So I would like to congratulate my colleagues from the network of uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Alliance Française in Southeast Asia for their fantastic work and uh, I hope everybody will enjoy this forum and learn a lot about opportunities offered to French speakers in ASEAN. So thanks a lot. And Zaha, I'll let you the floor for the rest of the forum. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vincent and Savia, for those very warm words of welcome. All right, we are about ready, but I just want to, you know, be kind enough to give you a heads up that as we progress through the forum, we will be asking questions about the presentation. So make sure that you're you're listening and you're taking down notes, because later on, when I ask that question, the first participant who will be able to give the correct answer will be taking home a free Alliance Française session, which can re be reduced deemed in any of the alliances in Southeast Asia. It could be used online, on-site, or in high flex, whether that's in Bali, Bangkok, Brunei, Manila, Medan, Penang, and Singapore. So again, listen up, take down notes, and type your answers as fast as you can after I say go, of course. <laughs> okay, so we are ready to kickstart today's conference. But just so you know, we are all very, very lucky to be graced with the presence of our expert panelists for today. 
Our first panelist is the financial counselor of ASEAN countries at the French Embassy of Singapore. We have with us Mr. Raphael Bader. Hi, good afternoon. We also have our next panelist is the director of CCIR, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Thailand. She's also been the director of CCI in Kenya and has been working for big companies like L'Oréal, giving her in-depth insight of the situation of French companies all around the world. We have with us this afternoon, Ms. Justine Deguer. Our next panelist is the director of CCI in Malaysia, being as he's lived in Malaysia for over 30 years now. He's as Malaysian as he is French, as he claims at this point. And today he's here to share opportunities in, Malaysia's for, in Malaysia for French companies and French speaker. Sp French speakers today, we also have with us Mr. Lozak. All right, of course, joining us this afternoon, the superb director of CCI Philippines and the woman who has led and brought the chamber through COVID and has managed to, to really race it up, making it bigger, bolder, and better than it's ever been. And today we are lucky enough to learn from her. Ladies and gents, we will also be joined by Miss Mylise Charlotte. Right, and our last panelist is a client manager for IBM Philippines in charge of a French speaking team. Joining us this afternoon is Mr. Vital Chio. Now that you have a better idea on the experts gracing us today, let us give them a big round of applause for starters. There you go. <laughs> Thank you all for being with us here today. We are very excited. So let us get the show on the road and start our first segment. All right. The first thing that we will be tackling on today is the ASEAN economical situation. And of course, to walk us through this, it is our honor to be learning from the financial counselor responsible for monitoring the economic and financial situation around the ASEAN under the supervisor supervision, of course, of the head of regional economic department of the French embassy in Singapore. Our first speaker has been working for the French treasury for more than three years and was previously assigned in Tokyo, covering economic matters in Japan and Korea. So before he joined the public sector, he also worked for French financial institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us all welcome Mr. Raphael Bader. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, the organizers, for giving me the chance to start this webinar. And thank you, Your Excellency, for this great opening speech. So let me share my screen with you. So I'm Raphael Bader. I'm, I work at the French Embassy in Singapore. I'm, I'm covering all the ASEAN countries. It's great to speak with all of you today. Although it's not the main topic of this conference, I think it's always important to have some key economic figures in mind when we talk about France in ASEAN. So I would like to, to stress two free trade agreements that exist between the EU and ASEAN countries. The one with Singapore since 2019 and the one with Vietnam since 2020. These two free trade agreements are very good news for all the large French companies and SMEs that want to export to ASEAN countries. In the future, we can expect, expect other FTA with Philippines and Thailand, and ultimately, we can uh, hope that uh, EU will reach a global free trade agreement with all the ASEAN bloc. Um, before going further, please have in mind that all the figures that will uh, follow come from the French customs, so they can differ from other statistics. So let's begin with exports. So to which ASEAN country does France mainly export? The short answer is Singapore. France exports around 60% of products to ASEAN uh, to Singapore. This is because Singapore is both a financial and trade pl trading platform. We estimate that more than half of exports going to Singapore are being re-exported. Re That's why the figures here are not very accurate. But we can see that the other main destination are Thailand for 11% and Vietnam for 10%. So what about imports? We can see that Vietnam is our main supplier in the region. It makes around 30% of French imports from ASEAN countries. So you can do the link with the FCA that was reached in 2019. And you might know that Vietnam is a large producer of electronics and clothing in the world. The other main suppliers are Thailand, 70%, and Malaysia, 10%. So now that you have a better understanding of uh, the country breakdown, let's see what kind of products are traded between France and ASEAN. 
the first exported items are aeronautical and agri-food. Actually, the kind of project exported to ASEAN reflects what France is exporting globally. Historically, the aeronautical projects make the first exported item to ASEAN, but because of the COVID pandemic uh, last year and, and uh, in 2020, the sales were one third lower than pre-COVID levels. Um, the other main exported items are agrofood, especially beverages like wine, spirits, and mineral water. Of course, the luxury projects make a large part of the exports, especially textiles, clothing, leather and shoes, and perfume and cosmetics. What about imports? France is more dependent on electronics and textiles import from ASEAN. This is because ASEAN countries have a very cheap labor cost. That's why many French companies choose ASEAN countries to produce their product. Actually, ASEAN account for 10% for of French global imports in the textile sector. The second most imported goods are computer electronics and op optical projects, uh, especially from Vietnam. So who is gaining the most in this trade relationship between France and ASEAN? Unfortunately for France, France has a very large trade deficit with ASEAN. Last year, the trade deficit was worsened to 5.5 billion euros. The only large trade surplus that France have, has with an ASEAN country is with Singapore. But as I said, it's because Singapore is re-exporting a lot of projects. So here are the key takeaways for you about this trade relationship. The total trade with ASEAN is worth 30 billion euros in 2021, if we sum exports and imports. While these figures can appear very large, it represents only 4% of France trade uh, globally. So we can expect that there is large potential growth in the future. You can see that Singapore is the first client and Vietnam is the first supplier. And this is probably because of the, F, the free trade agreements that were, that were reached uh, in the last years. Regarding the outlook for 2022 and 2023, we can expect that with the economies reopening in the region, the, tourist, the tourism will recover. But all of this is conditioned, of course, to the global geopolitical environment. So besides trade, uh, I want to stress other economic uh, indicators of French presence in the region. Uh, other, besides trade, the French direct investment are something very important for, for the French community in the region. Direct investment are ownership or acquisition of French companies uh, in the region. They represent 33 billion euros and they focus in manufacturing and finance industry. So like trade, Singapore attracts most of the FDI and you can see that the FDI have doubled over a decade. So this means that the ASEAN represents a large potential growth uh, for French companies. Very often, these direct investments uh, are accompanied by a lot of French communities. As you can see, Singapore is the main French company, com community in the region, according to the Register of French Nationals Living Abroad. It is next to Thailand and Vietnam. So let me end this presentation here. Do not hesitate to ask me questions to my email. And I strongly believe that Southeast Asia is a region with many business opportunities for French companies and in which French must con continue to strengthen its presence. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Raphael Bader, for shedding light into the situation of French companies in the ASEAN and, of course, um, how the trades have been going. This has been very insightful for all of us. And again, for those of you who have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below so that we can have a personal policy in countries. It is time to explore the situation we face in Malaysia, Thailand, and in the Philippines. And what better way to do that than by getting to know it straight from the directors of the CCIs from these um, respective countries. So let us begin with getting to know what it's like for French speakers as they thrive in Malaysia. With this, we would like to call on the director of CCI in Malaysia, Mr. Lozak. Good afternoon, Mr. Lozak. Oui, bonjour, Sarah. Bonjour. Thank you very much for this uh, very dynamic and uh, cheerful uh, 
uh, openings and uh, introduction. Um, so my name is Michel Lozac and I represent the Malaysian Pen Chamber in, uh, in Malaysia. First of all, before I start, I would like to, to stress that this event is really a good, um, a good example of the collaboration and the, on, on the close work together between the Alliance Francaise and the, the network of the French chambers overseas and especially in ASEAN. And we are very proud to be part of this. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, just a quick, uh, since Mr. Uh, Raphael has already uh, touched a lot on the on the economic figures, I will not be too long on the on this uh, part. Uh, just a quick reminder about uh, Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia is uh, a country which is about two thirds of the size of uh, France. It has about 33 million people. And uh, it's a new country. It's a former British colony. The country was formed between 1957 and 1966. And, and uh, the, the concrete consequence is that uh, uh, we have a very strong uh, based uh, heritage from the colonial uh, time. First of all, the business language is English in Malaysia. Uh, second of all, the, all the legal system, all the, the economic organization is based also on the British system. So it makes it very easy for uh, uh, setup of uh, French companies in Malaysia. It's a very uh, investor friendly uh, location. And uh, as per the, the, the various uh, classification which are done at uh, on the doing business, uh, Malaysia is always in the top 10, top 15 in the world when it comes to about the facilities to do, uh, to do business. And the French chamber in Malaysia is very much involved in that. We have three business centers and we have about 300 uh, members. The bilateral relation between France and Malaysia, I will not insist uh, uh, too much. Uh, Mr. Rafael has already mentioned, is just that uh, under normal conditions, which is previous COVID, the trade between the France and Malaysia is it's about uh, 5 billion euro. I would like also to stress that Malaysia is a second uh, the most developed country in ASEAN after Singapore. And we also host to the largest business, uh, sorry, the largest uh, middle class uh, size of the population. And this is uh, very important for the, for the development. Next slide, please. The key sectors uh, that we can find in Malaysia, first of all, manufacturing sector is, uh, is, a, key, is a key part. More than 50% globally is uh, referred to the manufacturing sector, is the key to the, the development of the Malaysian economy. Uh, Raphael stressed about electronics. Electronics, it's a very big component of the economy in Malaysia, and also a big component in the relation with uh, with France, uh, service sector also a key uh, a, a key a key part. Uh, tourism under normal conditions uh, and hopefully uh, resuming soon is a tourism uh, tourism sector is, is a key with up to twenty five million tourists uh, coming from overseas uh, on an all time and also of course. Uh, potential opportunities of French speaking people. There is in a normal, a normal year, there is between 100 to 250,000 French people visiting Malaysia as tourists. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay. Um, most of the, the big, uh, the, the, the CAC 40, the big French companies are all represented in Malaysia. Globally, we estimate the presence of the French business presence in Malaysia at about uh, uh, 500 companies. Uh, two thirds of them, 300, are uh, actually subsidiaries of companies from France. And we have also a strong base of French entrepreneurs, about 150 to 200 of them. Um, also, 26,000 people are employed by French. Uh, 
company in Malaysia. One last word, since Raphael also mentioned it, the total of the French community in Malaysia is a stand that's about 3,500 people in France, in, uh, in Malaysia. We have also a French school, we can accommodate uh, about to, uh, today about 800 uh, students. Next slide, please. Going more into detail about the opportunities of the, for the, the, the French speaking people, uh, these are some of the companies who are looking at employing French, uh, uh, French speaking on French trained uh, people. Uh, some are SMEs, some are larger companies like uh, Colas, like Technip. Uh, many companies in oil and gas sectors are, uh, are keen to employ uh, French speaking or French trained people. Um, we have to know that uh, this the French people, the, sorry, besides the Malaysian people learning French in Alliance Française in Malaysia, in Penang or in Kuala Lumpur, we have also, in average, between eight to nine hundred Malaysians who are studying in France. And uh, for that matter, the Malaysian <laughs> French Chamber is working closely with the French Embassy in Malaysia and also with the Malaysian Embassy in France. Uh, to, to network and to monitor and to assist uh, these Malaysian students which are uh, studying in France. We have also the Malaysian French University Center, which is uh, strongly contributing also to on exchange and collaboration between the French and the Malaysian uh, institutions. So, also, there is an association of Malaysian students in France with which we are also working uh, closely. Uh, one last thing I would say that the, 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 about uh, opportunities is that the, the French presence in Malaysia has been since the independence of the country. And uh, many French companies, especially large ones, are actually uh, moving very fast uh, on to um, using Malaysian people for their uh, uh, top positions. Uh, uh, that means in, for many companies, and I will give an example with ST Microelectronics, which is the largest French company in, uh, in Malaysia. I, ST Microelectronics only have a Malaysian CEO and they have uh, all the head, uh, the head of departments, all the all the main people, all the management is Malaysians. And all these Malaysians, many of them are involved for the relationship with, uh, with France. So there are a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, Malaysian uh, uh, students who speak, uh, who speak French in, uh, in Malaysia. I think that's the last uh, slide, is it? So I would like to thank you again for the uh, for this opportunity to present uh, the, 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 the Malaysian uh, landscape. And uh, Zara, back to you for the continuation. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Michel Lozac. There are indeed a lot of opportunities in Malaysia for French speakers, and I'm sure that a lot of the students here would love to get to know more about them, which you can later on as you visit the booths that are available to you. You can start exploring the tabs that you are seeing on your left hand side and check out the different networking opportunities and booth opportunities there. All right. Now we've heard about the landscape in Malaysia, it is time to know what it's like for French speakers in Thailand. With this, we would like to call on the director of CCI Thailand, Ms. Justine de Guerre. Hi, Justine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Sawadika. Very nice to see all of you. Uh, I will try to uh, continue after Michelle and talk to you a bit about uh, business opportunities in Thailand and partnership in between uh, uh, France and the French uh, the business uh, that, uh, that are in Thailand. Um, you can go to the next slide. Maybe just to give a few key data for uh, Thailand, I, I will not go through the, all these, uh, these uh, figures, but uh, so Thailand, as you know, is a big country with uh, 70 million inhabitants. 
um, their um, balance uh, exports, uh, French exports are worth uh, 3.1 billion uh, dollars. Uh, that was the figure for 2021. And uh, for the Philippine imports from France, it's 1.4 uh, billion. Uh, French and Thailand are big uh, business partners uh, since a long time. The French, uh, uh, the Franco Thai Chamber has been uh, set up uh, more than 50 years ago in, uh, in Thailand. So there have been a long lasting uh, business uh, relation. There are more than 250 French companies in uh, Thailand, and we estimate to more than 2,000 uh, French companies that are exporting in Thailand through distributors. Um, what is uh, interesting figures maybe in uh, Thailand, uh, as you will see, I will not talk about inflation rate because we know that for all the region uh, in uh, worldwide uh, with uh, the economic situation, the inflation rate is quite high. Uh, but what is maybe interesting to see in Thailand is the unemployment rate that is around uh, 1%, so it's very low. So very uh, uh, dynamic uh, employment uh, situation in, uh, in, uh, in Thailand. And uh, maybe uh, we can have have a look also at the gross uh uh, the, the GDP uh, per uh, inhabitant, which is uh, 7,200 US dollar, which is uh, quite, uh, let's say, high for the for the region, but uh, average also. Um, as you know, Thailand is the second largest economy in Southeast Asia, and there is a strong connection, and a lot of companies also are setting up their uh, headquarters in uh, Thailand for Asian, because it covers also some uh, other countries of the, of the region. Maybe what is interesting also to say is that you know that the apex summit uh, uh, next month will be uh, will be in uh, in thailand uh, on the 17th and 18th of uh, november we can go to the to the next slide uh, so here are, are the Thailand business sector. I, saw, I know that uh, uh, when we are in France, when we think of Thailand, most of the people think about tourism. In, uh, in 2019, there were 40 million tourists in, uh, that came to Thailand. So it's very high figures. And most of the time, we think also about gastronomy <laughs> and all these kind of products. But Thailand is also a very strong uh, industrial uh, uh, stakeholder. Uh, so maybe to give you a few figures, uh, uh, Thailand is the first uh, Asian top uh, biodiesel um, biodiesel uh, producer. Uh, we know mainly also about uh, um, the, it's an exporter of bioplastic, a very strong uh, actor in uh, health and medical uh, tourism. Tourism. What we um, uh, most of the time don't really know is that uh, it's very strong in electronic uh, materials production, such as uh, hard disk uh, drive. Uh, and also there is a lot of uh, automotive uh, actors and producers uh, that are based in, uh, in the Thailand with strong industries uh, here we can go to the to the next slide um, so thailand is also the kitchen of the world um, there is a strong uh, rubber production in uh, in thailand and we know uh, we discuss about french companies after but michelin has a strong footprint in uh, in thailand um, big sugar production also in the region uh, rice uh, producer so i know it's the sixth um, rice producer, but it's the second uh, exporter of rice uh, worldwide in uh, Thailand. Um, and I let you see the rest, but so strong opportunities in agri agro sector and uh, uh, the Thailand BOI, which is the board of investment, which is uh, strongly giving incentives uh, to companies that are willing to uh, set up in Thailand, have a lot of incentive and a lot of, uh, um, let's say, um, programs and vision for Thailand to develop uh, agri agro in tech, in sustainability, organic products and uh, and so on. Uh, so good transition uh, to the next uh, next graph, which is uh, Thailand that is uh, 12 in uh, agriculture output. And you will see also uh, regarding manufacturing and uh, and also industrial uh, weight uh, in the in the region. We can go to the to the next slide. 
Um, what is important to say also is that in the incentive and in the business opportunities, and I think uh, future development in Thailand, there is a, um, there is a strong opportunities in digital development. Uh, Thailand uh, wants to go uh, toward uh, what they call Thailand 4.0. Uh, so there is a strong uh, digital connection here and a strong uh, connected market. Um, so with um, uh, several opportunities uh, in various uh, sectors of activity, but digital development is really part of the uh, business uh, opportunities uh, in, the, in the region. Uh, we can go to the next uh, slide. Thank you. So we, uh, regarding and talking about uh, French business, uh, and that's uh, what we what we are here for with the Franco Thai Chamber of Commerce, we try really to uh, uh, push and enhance uh, to develop uh, the business relation in between uh, France and Thailand. There are several uh, big uh, French companies that are uh, set up in the region. Here, here are few of them to give you uh, an idea. And what is interesting is that it covers it's covering uh, very various sectors. On the side, uh, sorry, I don't know if you are able to, to read it on your screen, but it's uh, to give an idea of the spread of the sector of our uh, members here at the Franco Thai Chamber. So you see the first category uh, is um, F&B, um, hospitality, and art and leisure. So there are a lot of them. You can see also that there are a lot of uh, companies that are uh, representing uh, retail and luxury. So luxury brand, but also all the FM, uh, FMCG's uh, brand and distributors that are here in, um, in Thailand. Uh, we can see also that we have a lot in tech, in health tech, in healthcare, sorry, energy. Um, there are a lot of development uh, toward transport, uh, energy, mobility, all these, you know, uh, very uh, trendy uh, sector, but that, that are really uh, uh, useful for the development of the smart cities of, uh, of tomorrow. Uh, what is important to say also is that there are a lot of headquarters also, and that's why I, I put the, the logo of the United Nations, but there are a lot of, uh, um, um, how to say, international organization headquarters that are present here. And I think uh, that's to come back to our main topic. If we talk about uh, French speaking um, businesses, uh, there is also a lot of French speaking international organizations that are present here and that are, uh, of course, uh, recruiting uh, talents uh, that speak French and that are needing uh, people that uh, speak French uh, that matter. So, uh, and like in all other countries, all the French speaking embassy and, you know, all the network of Francophonie are all also um, strong recruiters for French, uh, French speakers. That leads us to the, to the last slide. Uh, maybe to give a bit about uh, talk a bit about the French local uh, uh, language uh, footprint in uh, in Thailand. Uh, French has been uh, very uh, famous and uh, very strongly uh, how to say uh, uh, present in Thailand thanks to the uh, Majesty the King uh, Rama IX that was the, the, the father of the actual uh, king that was uh, that has uh, lived and studied uh, in France and that was a, a fluent French speaker. He is very. Uh, he was very admired and uh, estimated by the by the by the, the Thai people. So a lot of people uh, learned French and etc. Thanks to this uh, to this influence. Now it's still up and running as there are 560,000 Thai uh, uh, people that are speaking uh, French fluently today and more than 30,000 pupils that are learning French uh, uh, every year. So the, the Alliance Française uh, is uh, making a strong uh, work also to uh, push towards uh, uh, French companies that are set up in Thailand uh, to help them uh, learn French uh, to their uh, employees. So this is just a examples of French companies uh, that are here and that are uh, proposing French lessons to their uh, to their employees to enhance uh, uh, enhance the, the language. So we have Airbus, BNP, Bolloré, Atlantic, Hermès, L'Oréal and Michelin. But just is, this is just to give you uh, examples. And of course, all the local um, francophone embassies that are also pushing uh, for um, uh, and helping to help uh, more French speakers uh, in their uh, in their employee. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Don't hesitate to reach out to us on the on the boot if you have uh, more questions uh, towards uh, towards Thailand. And uh, looking forward to to meet some of you.
Savarika, thank you. Thank you so much, Justine, for that testimony. It is quite thrilling to see how much can be achieved with French proficiency and, of course, the different opportunities that are available in Thailand for French speakers. So again, thank you so much. All right. So now let us hear about these opportunities and see how they look like here in the Philippines. And of course, who better to paint this picture for us than the director of CCI Philippines herself. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Ms. Maylise Charlotte. Hi, Melis. Hi, Zara. Salamat po. Thank you for that very kind introduction. Thank you, uh, Ambassador, for your kind words and uh, Alliance Francaise for organizing this. It's very nice to hear from our colleagues in um, ASEAN, and I'm happy to discuss the Philippines now. So can you just go to the next slide? I'll review also the key numbers for the Philippines. So Philippines has a very young population with 111 million people. Um, it's also a country where we actually speak English, so I'll mention more later on, but speaking French, it's how you can also really diverse your profile here in the Philippines. Uh, in terms of growth, uh, in the Philippines, we are a very annual growth rate that is uh, interesting. We are right now targeting 8.2%, which is massive. Uh, and last quarter to 2022, we had 7.4% of growth. So it's very Things are really moving back in the country, but as you can see, there's also a lot of islands. So um, what we can see is uh, in different uh, aspects of the uh, regions of the Philippines, the dynamism is uh, pushing. So mostly in Manila, the central um, city, and then in Cebu, in, back in the Visayas, back in the south. So we have um, the, the fifth largest economy is... Um, in, uh, in the Philippines and European Union here in the Philippines is uh, the fourth country uh, largest exporter. So it's it, there, there's a strong link between our two countries. And this is increasing thanks to also the work of great ambassador, like the ambassador for France here in the Philippines. So unemployment rate is quite low and the inflation rate has been increasing due to the pandemic. We are now an open country, so you can come to the Philippines uh, more easily than it has been with the pandemic, where we had a strong lockdown, but um, currently the country is open and open for business, as uh, President Marcos mentioned here in the Philippines. So next slide. Some of the fast growing economies. So for uh, manufacturing, agriculture and services, those are really the three top sectors here in the Philippines. When I'm speaking about services, uh, and that's something I'm gonna be, uh, take more time on, it's um, including what we call here the BPOs, business process outsourcing, which is a lot of call centers, um, supporting team, tech team for other big corporations in other countries, uh, especially to be honest with uh, countries that are based in the US and Australia, but more and more European companies such as French companies are also looking at having their um, tech team, support team back in the Philippines to support the whole company worldwide. So BPOs have a lot of needs into French speaking um, staff and it's really a skill that is being more and more demanded to the French Chamber to endorse them candidates. Agriculture is like Thailand a very big deal right now for the Philippines um, especially with um, livestock and poultry increased value of production. Manufacturing as well um, so uh, Raphael was mentioning that uh, France is in need of, you know, electronics, semiconductors and all that. So the Philippines are actually pushing a lot to increase that aspect and increase manufacturing back in the country and be even uh, more attractive. So next slide. Right. So as I mentioned earlier, BPOs are one of the sector here in the Philippines hiring for French uh, speakers, and that's not the only one. So a lot of government public sector here in the Philippines are also hiring people that could speak French, since French has uh, quite a great reputation back in the country. Construction, engineering, tech is also considered as an added value to um, learn uh, uh, that language. 
And uh, thanks to the service of Alliance Française, uh, you can you know register and uh, try uh, joining the French speaking community. My next slide. Just um, fintech, just um, a word on fintech and, and tech in general. Philippine has been really doing the transition into digital transformations, a lot of new uh, digital tools, which is also pushing the growth. And um, of course, you know, that's uh, some sectors that are moving together with all the aspects with sustainability. My final slide is just um, a short case study on how uh, it was really um, obvious for companies that uh, partnerships can be done. So we did a partnership with Alliance Francaise back in Manila for some of our members' companies, such as DataWars and SELOR, so that their team uh, would have some kind of like team building, but also an approach on, the, on how is it to do business back home in France, right, in case they would be called from the Philippines to go to the headquarter for a visit. So that's how, you know, we are also um, seeing an interest from companies here in the Philippines that have French roots to also, you know, uh, bridge more the culture of uh, France and the Philippines and share with their team members. So that's also an added value to share, you know, uh, and, and join also French companies uh, here in the Philippines that might be hiring. That's it. It's all for me, Zara. Back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marylise. We love to see how French speakers are now contributing, you know, not just to corporate jobs, but also to nation building in different countries around the ASEAN. And as you, you directors have mentioned, Malaysia, um, Thailand, and of course, the Philippines. So again, thank you so much, Michelle, Justine, and Marylise for giving us insight on that. All right. As we have it. Um, we had just gotten to our first few speakers. And if you want to know more about these chambers, feel free to head over to their booth. All you have to do is click on the networking or the partners tab and you can um, go ahead, check out their different booths. And if you have questions, you can address it there. Right. We are headed to the last guest of this segment. And after that, we will be having our pop quiz question. The one that we mentioned that if you get the correct answer to, you win a free Alliance Frances session from the branch of your choosing. You can use it at the Alliance Frances in Bali, Bangkok, Manila, Medan, Penang, and Singapore. And of course, you can claim this session, whether that's online, on site, or high flex. Right, so we've heard how the French community looks like in different parts of the ASEAN. And it's, right now it's time to hear a more concrete example of how the French language can possibly turbo boost your career. And to tell us more about it, we will be calling on the client manager from IBM Philippines who is in charge of the French speaking team. With that said, let us give it up for Mr. Vital Cheo. Hi, thank you, Zara. Hope you can hear me clearly. Loud and clear. Good afternoon. All right. Okay. So, good afternoon. So, my name is Vital Chiu, and I've been a client services. I'm in the client services manager in IBM. I've been with that company now for about ten years, and the reason I'm able to have a visa to work in the Philippines is just because of the French language on my CV. So, uh, Melis mentioned it a while ago. Uh, that the BPO is one of the services that I need of French speakers in the Philippines. And I'm hoping that uh, what I'm going to share motivates, inspires, or at least serves as an eye-opener to those who have no idea what they could do with the French language on their CV. So um, what, I, what we do in the company, many people know IBM as uh, a technology company, but we are under the part of IBM that is called IBM Consulting. So we help companies globally transform their business and transform their processes. And we support uh, European accounts, uh, like in France. We support North America accounts uh, in Canada, especially in Quebec, where there are French speakers. So the account that I support is just one of many accounts in IBM that has French speakers. And I'm talking of an account that has 18 French speakers. So there are 18 people on just my account. This is just one of about five or six accounts in IBM that support French. And what we do, uh, the account I'm talking about we support a global, one of the biggest mining companies in the world, and we support them for their human resource services, HR services, and this would be for payroll, employee data management, um, uh, contact 
health center, um, payroll accounting, compensation, and benefits. So what, what we do is we would normally go looking for people that create strengths, but unfortunately, uh, we still don't have a lot of locals uh, available to pick up these jobs. And I think this is an opportunity for whoever is listening for the students to give it a try. Um, if you speak French fluently, um, you can actually earn a decent living uh, just by working in the business. Uh, IBM is just an example. IBM is just an example. I think there are a lot more BPOs like Melis mentioned a while ago that I need all the time to learn. Um, hi, Vital, you are on mute. Anything? Can you hear me now? There you go. Yes. Yes, this is better. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure what happened. What's the last thing you heard? My apologies. Um, you reiterated with me, Lisa, oh. and you said that um, there are, that it makes a big difference when you know how to speak French um, when you adapt them onto your team. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that there's, there's, there are, we have some boots later on. I'll be available on the boots to share with people what, the, what are the profiles we are looking for. But bottom line, there is huge opportunity for French speakers in the Philippines. And companies would normally go for the locals because it takes about two weeks to onboard a local. But to onboard a foreigner is going to take a company about three, four months. So the opportunities are there. Uh, we want the, the, the locals to grab those opportunities. And I think uh, I'll be available later on to share more details. Uh, that's it from me, Azara. All right. Thank you so much, um, Sir Vidal. And as he mentioned, he will be sharing a lot more about these opportunities later on um, because IBM does have a booth. So if you have questions, if you are interested, go ahead and check out their booth. And later on, also, we will be having a job fair session. This is happening at 545, where you can speak with more representatives of the IBM to see how you can jump in, how you can help, or if there is a position that is open that you are um, available to. If you're searching for a job, again, don't miss that. If you want to promote job offers in your company, all you have to do is look through um, the private messaging and contact Megan Lenoir on the networking tab to give her your name, your company, and the title of the job so that she can keep in touch. And if we can announce it here, that would be amazing. As I know, there are a lot of students here looking for opportunities around the ASEAN countries as well. All right, there you have it. What a wonderful discussion from our panelists. And this has just been our first segment of the day. I hope that it helped each of us get a better grip of how French speakers get to participate again in nation building around the ASEAN. If you have questions, do not hesitate to use the networking function to ask them about um, any concerns that you might have. And for those who want to discuss with our partners further, you can book an appointment through their booth on the sponsor tab as well. You will find their CCI, IBM, Campus France. For those who are willing and who want to study France in France, and of course, Desjardins, to help plan your migration to Canada. In just a bit, we will talk a little more about that. But for now, um, I want to make sure that everyone paid attention and that everyone is ready to answer the much anticipated pop quiz question. Okay, so just a quick recap of the mechanics that I mentioned earlier. I will be asking questions throughout this whole forum. And after I say go, you have to wait for the go. You type in your answer as fast as you can. And if you are the first one who got who gets that answer correctly, then you are going to be winning a free French session from the Alliance Francaise of your choice. So you can use that online, on-site, or high flex. You can avail it in Bangkok, Bali, Brunei, Manila, Medan, Penang, and Singapore. All right, I hope everyone got that and I hope everyone paid attention and are ready. Okay, let's get to our question. In which sector can you have language bonus in the Philippines? All right, in which sector can you have language bonus in the Philippines? Ready, get set, and go. Okay, we are 
getting a lot of answers. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Okay, and now we will be waiting for the official winner, which will be given in by none other than the deputy director of Alliance Française, Mr. Vincent Robin. All right, Vincent, have you seen our winner? All right, we have a lot of correct answers. We can see it now. The goal is to figure out who got it first. Okay. Vansan, are you there? All right, maybe we can circle to Therese to see if we got our winner ready. Okie dokes. We will circle back and let you know who had won the first round of pop quiz questions. So stay tuned, you guys, because that person will be taking home a free French session from Alliance Française, which you can claim online, on-site, or high flex at the Alliance Française of your choosing. Again, you can choose among Bali, Bangkok, Brunei, Manila, Medan, Penang, and Singapore. All right, we have our winner for today, and it is none other than Lawrence Andrew Cabrera. Lawrence Andrew Cabrera, congratulations. You are taking home a free French session from Alliance Française, which you can claim online, on-site, or high flex. You can avail this from the Alliance Francaise branch of your choosing. Congratulations once again. For those who have joined us through the first segment, again, thank you so much for being here. To our guests, our partners, TCI, IBM, Desjardins, Castellis, and Manila Times. Merci beaucoup. We are now headed to the second segment of the day, which will begin in just a few minutes. And this time, the segment will be focusing on the job market for French speakers in Canada and Quebec. And of course, later at 5 p.m. Manila time, we will be exploring opportunities for French speakers in the ASEAN, where we will be talking about the United Nations, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and the Department of Foreign Affairs. And last but not the least, at 5.30 p.m. later on, you will hear testimonials straight from those who live and breathe their own successes as boosted by the French language. We will be hearing success, success stories from CEOs, managers, and entrepreneurs here in the ASEAN. So do stay with us and don't forget to click on the next segment tab to hop onto the conversation, guys. You have to click on the next segment tab to be a part of the forum. And that is happening in just a minute. See you guys in just a bit.